G'day guys and welcome to Alcaciras. This is the little town where I call home on the very bottom part of Spain. Today we are in Plaza Alta, the nicest part of town. Today we got a very special video coming. Today is a video all from you guys. So I asked on my Instagram a little while ago about some questions about living in Spain, what it's like here, the differences between living in Australia where I'm from and living in Spain and just things like that. So I'm gonna set up shop around here and find somewhere comfortable to sit down and answer your questions. Oh. All right, well, let's get straight into it, shall we? <laughs> Question number one, why did I choose Spain? Well, uh, at the time, I moved here about three years ago, and at the time, I just kind of wanted a change of scenery. A whole bunch of stuff was happening back home, uh, nothing negative or anything, I was just very bored. I was doing the same thing all the time, working a job that I didn't really enjoy. I always wanted to learn Spanish. I learned Italian at school, so for me, it was like always a dream to come to Europe. Uh, and live in Italy, that was what I wanted to do in the first place. And things kind of changed, I started learning Spanish, and I got the opportunity to come over here and do English teaching, and I'm here. Three years later, I'm still here. That's why I chose Spain. Question number two. Could you see yourself permanently living there? Short answer, no. Long answer, uh, I love Spain, I love living here, I've had a fantastic time, I've seen a lot of the country, uh, it's a fantastic place to visit. I always tell people that if you want a European holiday, if you don't have time to kind of move around a whole bunch of different countries, just come to Spain. There's mountains, uh, paradise islands, the Canary Islands and like Ibiza and stuff like that. Uh, you've got forests, you've got absolutely everything. You've got different languages, different dialects and, and all kinds of stuff. It's like so many different countries in one. But in terms of living here, it's not that I don't want to live here, it's just that I've got like aspirations to live in other parts of the world. I mean, I've been here for three years, I can see myself being here for like maybe another one or two, maybe, I don't know, it's, it's difficult to say. So permanently, no, but it's not because I don't like Spain, it's because I want to go to another place. Question number three. What was your craziest and most outlandish experience in Spain thus far? Wow, that's actually quite difficult to nail. Um, you know what, if I could wrap it all up into one, I would say like Spanish party culture. But as like a single experience, it would have to be Las Fallas of Valencia. Las Fallas is like, uh, basically, how do I even explain this? Every city in Spain, every town, every village has like their annual parties, right? The parties of Valencia, of the city of Valencia, are next level. It is basically like two weeks of non-stop fireworks, 24-7. In, in the middle of the day, there's fireworks. There's like kids with firecrackers, there's people with these big bombs that just explode. They have these big fires in the middle in the plaza, which are just colors and streamers and noise. It's absolutely next level. That's all during the day. And at nighttime, of course, there's like a bigger fireworks show. But uh, they also do a thing on the 19th of March every year. That's when the festival takes place, around that time. And the 19th is always the last uh, day of the festival, which happens to be my birthday, which is probably why I, I like it so much. And on that day, on the 19th, that is when they burn Las Fajas. That's These are like these big, um, I, I don't know what they're made of. They're kind of like these big paper mache statues that I guess are in just every neighborhood of the city and they burn them basically they all come people come together there's music and alongside with the fireworks they just burn these giant things and everyone gathers to watch it it's just absolutely crazy so aside from all of that it's just like a party like 24 7 in the streets if you go through the old town at the night time especially uh there's like djs there's people dancing there's music there's like a bar set up there's makeshift bars and stuff like that it's absolutely unreal it's the first time that i saw something like that in my life like just chaos and partying in the streets like no police presence everyone was doing everything illegal that they could and everyone was having a great time it was totally safe there was no i mean people were fighting with fireworks that's probably not the safest thing to do but it was um you know a crazy 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 experience and i would have to say that is the craziest one so far okay question number four what still exists that has impressed you about the Moorish conquest of southern Spain? For those who don't know, the Moors, or Los Moros, were basically the, the Arabs and the people from the desert, from Morocco, the Berber people, who came over many hundreds of years ago and conquered like 80% of the Spanish peninsula. Uh, for this reason, there's like a lot of Arabic words in Spanish, uh, and so on and so forth. The most impressive thing is definitely the architecture that they left behind. I mean, the jewel has to be Alhambra in Granada. It's 
absolutely amazing. It's like this old castle on top of a hill that was used as a palace. I don't know in what year, but back in the golden era of Al-Andalus, that's like the traditional name, the old Arabic name for Andalusia, the province where I am now, or the, the state, the region that I'm in now, uh, previously was called Al-Andalus. And it's, uh, you know, it's just amazing that even the smallest, most boring little town around here can have like a fantastically preserved old Arab baths or like an old castle or like an old wall or fortification or something. It's just, it stood the test of time and it's really distinct to like the traditional European castles. Uh, and it's just fantastic. I mean, it's it, sometimes you can take a bus or a train through the countryside and, and it's, the, the landscape is just littered with like castles and old things. Anyway. I am getting kind of thirsty and a little bit hungry, a little bit peckish. It's uh, 4.30 and I'm meant to be meeting up with my buddy Sam around the corner here for a bit of a bite to eat. So let's go link up with him and he might even answer a question or two because he is from the United States and he definitely has uh, some experiences to share about living in Spain also. All right, we have arrived to Cien Montaditos. This is one of my favorite places to come and get like a, a cheap beer and a little snack. Uh, on Wednesdays and Sundays they have all montaditos which are like a little sandwich for one euro and the beer like a I think it's 500 mils of beer like a jug of beer is a uh, euro 50 um, it's like the classic spot to come with your friends when you don't want to spend too much money which gives me the opportunity to answer a fantastic question why in Spain do they drink 200 milliliter beers well this is called a caña and it's basically, it's just a little beer made to enjoy, to sip on. Uh, and you just keep getting them, basically. It's not about uh, only drinking a little bit of beer, because people drink a lot of these and they're quite cheap. I mean, you can get them for probably like 80 cents. Uh, in some places they even come out with food. And the idea is to like sip and enjoy the beer, not to get smashed. If you want to get smashed, there's plenty of cheap alcohol here. Alcohol is ridiculously cheap, for me anyway speaking. I um, mean, you can get a bottle of vodka for like five euros. Uh, you can get a bottle of good vodka for like 10 euros. In Australia, oof, that'll be like 30. Um, and yeah, so, I'm here with my buddy Sam. Hello, hello. He's gonna help me answer some other questions about living in Spain. Actually, before we get into the questions, let me show you what these montaditos are about because Sam has literally just arrived with the food. Oh yeah, what have we got? I don't even know what I ordered. Do you know which one is? You only ordered one, so that's gonna be mine here. Basically, a montadito is a little sandwich and 100 montaditos, which is the place where we're at, means 100 montaditos, 100 little sandwiches. Uh, get a load of this. So, I've got here, I don't actually know what, some kind of meat with a bit of mayonnaise and bacon by the looks of it. Uh, I think that's tortilla española, like a Spanish omelette with some kind of creamy stuff about it. Sam's got a, Something in there. a sausage. Sure to be honest, Callum ordered for me, so kind of just going with what we get, you know? That's right, I have ordered our sandwiches today uh, without actually knowing what I have ordered. And that is because here, everything is listed on the menu, right? But there's literally, literally a hundred of these. And I can't be bothered sitting there and being like, I want this. I don't know. It's all gonna be all right. So I just literally, every time I order, I say to the guy, give me a number 30, a number 25, and uh, Sam, tell me your number. Here, I forgot, I, I think he said 32, 35. 35. Like he said 35 before, so I'm like, boom, 35. And then he did the same thing to me. He's like, all right, which one do I get? And I said, 72 or 70 something. It's a little tonteria. It's a little silly business, but it's, uh, I don't know, it's just like a fun thing I do every time I get here. So, uh, we're gonna eat and then answer some questions. How was your, your food? Pretty good, pretty good. I gotta say that and the Kanye together, you know, good combination. Mm, good combination. Mm -mm. And, uh, I gotta say guys, the food here is really cheap and like not good quality at all but it always hits the spot. It's like, uh, cause here people don't go to McDonald's so much. Here McDonald's is like going out for dinner with your friends or family or something like, I don't know. It's like a, a thing that you do on a special occasion. I mean, McDonald's should always be a special occasion or you'll get real fat. But like when people go out for like a quick snack, this is kind of like the place that they might come to. Anyway, we have... I'm feeling we're getting kicked out yeah. before. Actually, Actually, you know what guys? They're kind of cleaning up around here. So we might um find a different place to answer these final questions because they're kind of giving us the signal without giving us the signal. She's like literally like doing all of the chairs and everything like right next to us. 
All right, guys, well, as you saw, we had to leave Cien Monaditos, but no worries, that gives us an opportunity to show you the birthplace of Alcaciras' most famous son, Paco de Lucia. He was one of the best. Did he die? I think, he, sure. I think he died. He is, or I think he died. He died. He was <laughs> one of the best uh, flamenco guitarists in Spain. In the world basically uh, super 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 famous really really well known I mean people all over the world uh, listen to his music even the other day one of my friends um, sent me a uh, like a, a flamenco song and he's like hey do you know this song if you live in Spain I'm like do I know this song like I live around the corner from where that guy was born uh, so yeah um, we're kind of in the hood as you can see this is a typical Alcaciras street uh, so yeah we're gonna set up shop somewhere around here around the corner here somewhere I don't know and get through these final questions for you. All right, so question time finally with Sam. Uh, these questions definitely apply to you, mate. So uh, let's just get straight into it. Do you often get confused with being an American or a Brit? I, I get British quite a lot. I don't get American. I get German a lot for some reason. And uh, I've had French. I remember once, because I learned like Latino Spanish, once I was speaking, uh, to some people and they said to me like, ah, like, are you Mexican? And I was like, oh, thank you so much for like not calling me English or American. So that was really nice, but I, I never get American really. I guess because like Americans are a rarity here. Mm -hmm. I guess you... Rare breed. Uh, do you get Brit a lot? Yeah, to be honest, I get all kinds of things. I get Brit, I get Canadian sometimes as well. <laughs> it's a rare one, to be honest. I get American sometimes. Australian, rarely. Irish as well, you know, we get all kinds of stuff here. Sometimes somewhere completely different, some Russian, I don't yeah, know. Anything that's not Spanish, stuff. basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty obvious that we're not, so we get all kinds of stuff. Cool. All right, next up. How did you have to adjust your diet compared to home? Do you want to answer that one? Mm, yeah, so for me it was actually a pretty positive adjustment to be honest because I first moved here right after finishing college so uh, as you can imagine, like most students, uh, my diet was not exactly fulfilling and nutritious as it should be so adjusting to the sort of Mediterranean diet was uh, definitely a good change for me. Definitely haven't fully got there yet, we're still working on it but I'd say it was a positive one for me. Me, I eat... I tried it cook what I used to cook in Australia because like I like cooking and I would make the same kind of chicken and rice and salads and whatnot everything meal prep but uh, I will say that I definitely adapted to what they have in the supermarket here there's like just a lot less selection at least in like the smaller local supermarkets there's just like a lot less selection than what I had in Australia so I wouldn't be able to get like a nice I don't know type of salad mix or like maybe a special kind of sauce is missing like I just had to kind of go with more basic things I swear like everyone eats uh, like tomato sauce here, ketchup. Yeah. Like, they're, like they're crazy about it here. It's time. everywhere. Like on it comes, everything. yeah, on everything. Like any kind of burger, any um, sometimes like even like cien monteritos. Like half of the menu is with ketchup. So uh, ketchup and bread. Ketchup Staples, and bread. Really <laughs> yeah, pretty uh, pretty simple eating around here sometimes. Mm. But my diet hasn't changed too much. I do think that I hmm, I eat a lot more pork. That's for sure. Because pork is like cheap around here. Come on, is like the national dish and you can just get it everywhere on everything so I definitely eat a lot more pork all right mate final one before we uh, hit the road and start uh, answering some of these questions right. in Spanish what's the biggest difference between living in Spain and at home I'm gonna say culturally it's you know chalk and cheese They're very 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 different it's um I don't even have to get into it I mean this is Spain and I'm from Australia of course culturally it's gonna be very different one thing actually one thing that's really different here is the price of alcohol. I mentioned it before, I think. Mm -hmm. um, check this out. For example, I went and bought some beers before. I have got here eight beers. This cost me five euros, okay? And this is like a nice beer too. This is Alhambra Especial. It's special. Uh, it's actually like quite nice. These were like, what, like 50 something, no, 63 cents a can, I think it was. Man, in Australia, like, that will be so expensive. Mm. Like the cheapest six pack you can get is gonna be like $11 and it's gonna be shit beer. Yeah, um, Aside from, yeah, the price of alcohol, just the cost of living here is quite cheap. I mean, my rent is, I pay 175 euros a month for, for, my, for my room anyway. Uh, in Australia, I paid 430 a week, I think, dollars. So let's just say a whole lot more than what I, what I pay here. Uh, also, travel here is a lot cheaper, like you can fly out of Seville or Malaga or anywhere around here to anywhere in Europe for like 20 euros, 30 euros, 40 euros, 50 euros 
Uh, in Australia, we, we have cheap flights sometimes, mm -hmm. but I don't know if you have cheap flights in the States between yeah, cities. Yeah, definitely not as cheap as they are here, to be honest, especially not between countries. I mean, it's not Yeah, it's comparable. crazy. I, had a, I bought a flight once for for 13 euros yeah, from, from Berlin to, to Malaga. It's absurd. It's nice, though. It's incredible. I mean, maybe not this year as much, but on normal years, yeah, definitely. It's perfect. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Well, we uh, it's getting late. We need to get home, so we're going to head back to our homesteads and answer some questions in Spanish along the way. Before we get home, we do have a couple of questions sent in that we are going to answer in Spanish. If they are Spanish questions, of course, we have to answer in Spanish. ¿Qué imagen tenías de España antes de venir? ¿Y qué imagen tienes ahora? A ver, yo, antes de venir, si les digo la verdad, no sabía mucho de, de España. Bueno, obviamente sí sabía algo, pero todo que sabía fue por mis experiencias con latinos y con las películas y cosas así. Y me metí en clases de español antes de venir y obviamente el profesor me explicaba un par de cosas, me enseñó cómo es España. Igualmente conocí a, a unos españoles en Australia antes de venir y me enseñaron muchísimo. Así que la imagen que tenía antes era eso, que antes de saber algo siempre pensaba que era un país como muy parecido a los de Latinoamérica. Y sí lo es en algunos aspectos y en otros no. Pero la imagen que tengo ahora es que es un país increíble, es que es muy tradicional, tiene muchísima cultura, tiene comida, la gente es muy alegre. Incluso ahora, como estábamos ahí caminando, y una señora como se acercó y dijo, hola, buenas tardes. Y es como, wow, qué divino vivir en un sitio donde la gente, donde los desconocidos te saludan por la calle. ¿Qué bueno. piensa usted? Bueno, tampoco sabía mucho antes de venir aquí, pero lo que pensaba es que iba a ser un país en todas partes bastante similar, pero no es, no lo es, es que cada comunidad tiene sus propias eso sí. normas, tiene sus propias culturas, festivas, cosas así, por eso, por ejemplo, la diferencia entre Cataluña y Andalucía, por ejemplo, está más grande que pensaba al principio. Sí, sí, yo también, eso de que hay idiomas diferentes, hay dialectos incluso, eh, es que cada parte de España tiene su encanto, cada parte es muy diferente y en Australia pues todo el país es igual, <risa> básicamente hay desierto y playa y así pero hablamos el mismo inglés, tenemos el mismo acento básicamente lo que encuentras en Sydney encuentras a 6 horas en, en avión en, en Perth, todo igual, igual, igual y ahora amigos hemos llegado a la última pregunta que es la pregunta que más me ha gustado tener que contestar y va así, ¿qué es lo que extrañas más de Australia que España no te puede dar? Y mi familia, por supuesto mi familia, extraño a mi familia muchísimo, llevo aquí tres años, el año pasado estuve en Australia por 10 semanas, que a ver, es mucho tiempo, pero después de 10 semanas volví a España y fue de, pff, ¿cuándo volveré a ver a mi familia? ¿Quién sabe? Porque yo no sé. Y con eso de COVID, nadie sabe. Y eso es lo que más me hace falta, mi familia. Siento que estoy perdiendo las experiencias de mi familia, de mis amigos. Tengo amigos que ya tienen hijos. Uh, las vidas de mis padres están cambiando siempre. Y aquí estoy yo haciendo otra cosa. Ellos no saben de mi vida, no sé de sus vidas. A ver si nos hablamos mucho y sí, pero es otra cosa vivir en España que vivir eh, en la misma ciudad, ¿sabes? Y, y ya. Sin hablar de cosas como estabilidad de la vida y cosas de esas, simplemente eso, mi familia. Mm. Sam. Sí, yo también obviamente echo de menos a mi familia, pero lo que extraño también es el cambio de las estaciones, que vivo muy al norte <risa> en los Estados Unidos, básicamente en Canadá más o menos, y por eso tenemos un verano, un otoño, ah. invierno, primavera que hay aquí también, pero básicamente solo hay el verano y el invierno. Sí. Y no es una cosa mala, que no echo de menos a la nieve uh, todavía, pero echo de menos a esquiar y ver a todos los uh, árboles. Eres con... súper americano, sí, ¿eh? Sí, sí, súper americano, claro. Yo en mi vida he visto nieve como tres veces y, sí. y para mí hace frío aquí. <risa> sí. Lo he visto demasiado veces, de hecho, es que, pero también lo he hecho de menos, es que me gusta esquiar y ver todas las montañas blancas también y cosas así. No lo he hecho tanto cuando estoy en la playa aquí en el invierno, <risa> pero a veces lo extraño, sí. Sí. Y bueno amigos, con eso 
les digo adiós, les digo muchísimas gracias por ver el video y nos veremos la próxima vez que salga a grabar algo. Hasta entonces, adiós. adiós.